In this lecture, we will understand how to perform failure analysis step as per the new FMEA approach. Having learned the concept of failure modes, effects, causes in the earlier lecture, I hope you will be able to relate to the failure analysis much easily. As described earlier, the purpose of the failure analysis is to identify the failure causes, modes and effects and explore the relationship between them and the relationship with the function and the structure that we created earlier. Let's right away jump into the concept of how we fill this with an example. So here we are and this is a continuation to what we learned earlier of the starter motor that is the electrical starter motor system and we are now focusing on the failure analysis which is step 4 and as we talked earlier let's stick on to the focus element and if you look at the focus element it is the starter motor and the purpose of the focus element or the function of the focus element is that it converts the electrical energy into mechanical. Now looking at that what could be the possible failure modes for the focus element? One of the failure modes of many could be that water entry through the terminal cover into the starter motor resulting in moisture in the coil. So that could be one possible failure modes of many failure modes. If you take a step back and say if you have not predicted this, let's say I just put this stuff here and said water is entering and you agreed and this is what we traditionally used to do in the FMEA earlier. With the new format, the change here is that instead of directly jumping into the failure mode, we focus on the failure effect. The failure effect is identified by looking at the next level or the next high level function requirement. The function requirement here is that it should crank the combustion engine. What could be the possible failure mode? One failure mode could be that it is not able to crank the combustion engine so the engine is not starting so that could be one effect. The other effect is that voltage is not sufficient so it's not able to again crank the engine but it is an intermittent failure. So if you recollect we talked about four different types of errors in the earlier lecture you could link those here. Once the engine does not start, what you think could be possible failure modes? One of them is entry of water in through the terminal cover. Other could be various things. It could be to do with the battery. It could be to do with the various components that we have identified in the system level or subsystem level mapping. So we would add more columns here to say what possibly could be all the failure modes for the engine not to start. Engine not to start is just one effect so we may add other effects and for similarly the other effects as well we may identify failure modes. So this exercise where we try to stick on with the color codes and try to identify the failure effect for the next high level function would help us to make sure that our FMEA is comprehensive. For the failure mode we try to identify what are the failure causes. Normally we try to look at the cause and effect diagram and try to map that. The problem with that is that the reasons that we write may or may not necessarily be mapped to the next level problem. It may be mapping to something else which is outside the system and that will be out of scope and no one will action that. So in order to prevent that what we have again done is we want to associate the cause with the next lower level function that we have done in the functional analysis. In this example, the next lower level function is to provide protection and rigidity to the starter motor. And clearly the cause here relating to that would be that the inner layer of the seal, one possible reason, inner layer of the seal on the terminal cover is loose enough for the unmissioned terminal cover OD. So there is a cap a seal that's going and sitting on the OD of the terminal cover and in that place because it's unmissioned the terminal cover is unmissioned there is a, a mismatch so the fitting is not tight enough. So that way we are not going outside the system or the scope that we have defined. 
This is one way of making sure that your FMEA is foolproof. At this point, I also want to talk about cascading of FMEAs. And FMEAs can be done at various levels, right? It can be done for the system, subsystem and component and it can go even further beyond that. We want to make sure that there is a strong relationship between the FMEAs of various levels. And how is that possible? When I'm doing a system level FMEA or a product level FMEA to start with, the failure effect would be on the product. The next level system, the focus element is the system level element. So the failure mode will be attached to that. And the lower level system to that is the failure cause. I hope you are able to relate this to the template that we talked about earlier. Let's now take a system, the starter motor system. And if you go one level higher, it becomes the product and one level lower, it becomes the subsystem. When I'm trying to create an FMEA for a system level, then the failure mode is attached to the system. The failure effect goes to the product and the failure cause is to the subsystem, which is what we talked about in the template a couple of minutes ago. When I do the FMEA for the next level, that is for the subsystem level, then for the subsystem level, the failure cause that we have taken there can be assigned as a failure mode in this FMEA. So this is where the role of the facilitator comes in. In case the actions which are needed subsequently for the FMEA to be completed, those actions can then be cascaded to the next level of FMEA using this methodology. The failure cause of one level gets mapped as failure mode of the next level. Similarly, the failure mode of previous level gets mapped as failure effect of the next level. Likewise, when I talked about system and subsystem, you can also do similar mapping likewise for subsystem and component, which is what number two and number three is talking about. If you look at the failure cause of the subsystem, that can actually become the failure effect of the component. Then we would go into what is the failure mode for the component and what is the failure cause for the component. And the failure cause for the component could ideally be a dimension or a feature or something like that, which is to do with the material property, etc. This linkage between various levels is very, very critical when we are doing an FMEA to make sure that we don't have any pots which are unattended in the entire schema of the whole system that we are trying to improve. So with that note, I'm going to complete this lecture. In the next lecture, we will talk about risk analysis.